Now let's turn our decomposition idea into a data definition. We'll call it a pivot tree. Each pivot tree has a number and two child pivot trees, or it represents an empty pivot tree with no elements. Now let's write a function that takes a pivot tree and produces a sorted list. The important thing to remember is that all the numbers in the left pivot tree should be smaller than the pivot, and all the numbers in the right pivot tree should be larger than the pivot. That means it will be really easy to write a function that produces a sorted list from a pivot tree. Let's start with some examples showing all of the relevant cases. Here we have two examples, one with just a make no pivot and one with a make pivot. Now let's follow our template to write flatten. Now we've completed our template and we can fill in the rest of our function. If we have a no pivot, we just produce the empty list. Otherwise, we have three things to put together. Flatten produces a list of numbers that will be sorted. Pivotval produces a single number. We want to combine them, and we know that pivotval goes in between the left and the right. We'll use the append function to put them together. Append takes lists, here lists of numbers, and combines them in order. But pivotval is just a single number, so we'll turn it into a list. Here, like in the merge sort example from last lecture, this is one of the few cases where using the list function inside a function definition is appropriate. Now that we have three lists, we'll put them together with append. All our tests pass, and we successfully know how to consume a pivot tree. Next, we're going to see how to produce one.